So, you want to be a heavy equipment diesel technician. First off, I want to be clear about something. Our job is not necessarily easy, it is very dirty, and being a heavy equipment mechanic is also very hot on our bodies. Now, I think that, generally speaking, the public does a good enough job of deterring young people from trade jobs and trade schools. So, I'm gonna leave you with that warning, that this is a job that should be taken seriously. And like any other aspect of moving on from high school or wherever you're at now, you should consider it carefully. And with that being said, let's get into what it takes to become a diesel mechanic. So before we begin considering training and everything else that goes into learning what it takes to be a diesel mechanic, let's first consider where you think you might want to take your career. There are numerous routes you can go. You can go broad and learn about all types of diesel engines, Cummins, Caterpillar, Pack Car, any other diesel engine out there. Now training for that is going to be much more expensive and it's going to be a big school like UTI or another technical program that has a broad spectrum of what they're teaching and not something specific. So let me help you understand what I mean by something more specific. For myself, an example, I went to a program called Fabtech that was developed by our Caterpillar dealer, specifically designed to teach about Caterpillar equipment. Now we learned broad spectrum about fuel systems, electrical troubleshooting, hydraulics, things like that, but everything was in reference to how it worked on Caterpillar equipment. So there are definitely pros and cons to having a specialized program or having a non-specialized program. Although in my case, due to the fact that I came to be a Caterpillar mechanic, I truly believe that the pros far outweigh the cons due to the fact that after five years of experience at a Caterpillar dealership, I now have that name backing me if I wanted to go anywhere else. And the fact of the matter is, you mentioned Caterpillar, nearly anyone will hire you. Now, however that may sound or come across, it's just the truth and we experienced that even going through the program before we were working at the dealership where we were getting job offers from people just hearing that we were going through a cat training program. So if on a side note, if a cat training program is something of interest to you, if you specifically want to get into the Caterpillar field, then I will link the two uh, programs that are offered for cat specific training. Uh, the one that I went through, which is specifically here in Wisconsin, and the uh, nationwide one, which is the Think Big program, which most cat dealer techs go through. Now, both are good programs. Obviously, I know more about the Fabtech program, being as that's what I went through, but I will put links in the description below for both of those. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, if a broad training program is more up your alley or uh, something that you are more seriously considering than a specialized program in the Caterpillar field or some other field, I would like to say this. You have to consider that prices for schooling, even tech schools, are going up significantly. So something like UTI for their diesel program costs thirty to forty thousand dollars a year roughly. That is significantly more debt than what you need to carry and when I say need to carry, there are other options to get into this field. Because there are so many uh, people that are going into four-year programs, that makes for a lot less people going into tech programs and then in turn coming into this trade field, uh, any trade field for that matter. And we definitely feel it. There's a lot of want for more uh, technicians and definitely not enough people to fill that, that need. So. Your other option, and the option I suggest to people when they ask, is take the chance, go around to your local dealerships and go talk to the service managers. Walk in there and say, hey, I'm really looking for a job. I would like to get in this field. This is something I really want to try out and really want to do. You may start sweeping floors, washing machines, doing something like that, some job that nobody else wants to do. 
And this is really going to determine whether or not you really want to be in this field and if you're willing to work your way up through it. There are plenty of people that have started out this way and worked their way up into being technicians and all the way up through the ranks of the technicians and make very good money. What this does for you is once you've become a technician and once you've worked your way into the shop, most other shops, including Caterpillar, require three to five years experience in a particular field. If you have diesel experience, they very likely would consider you uh, coming from a truck on highway truck background and trying you out in the heavy equipment department. That is always a possibility. So between choosing a technical program or taking the chance and walking into a dealership and talking to the service manager, those are going to be your two best options for getting into this trade. Now some of you at this point are like, hey buddy, that sounds all good and well if you're you know, 18 years old, but I have a career that I want to switch up, I have a family, I have bills, I have other responsibilities, I don't have the time and I don't have the money to go back to school. So that's all fine and well. I want to go back to a point I made earlier. Walk into your local dealership, I want to emphasize, walk into your local dealership. Talk to the service manager. I don't think that writing a application or making a phone call is going to cut it. We are at uh, the best unemployment rate that we've been in a long, long time and there's plenty of people that are willing to do things other than write up an application. So applications get shoved under a stack of paper and nobody pays attention to them. Dress up clean. Act professional. You know, be polite. Ask for the service writer. Say, hey, I want to work my way up through the ranks. I don't have the experience that your company requires, but I'm willing to do what I need to do in order to become a technician. Where can you start me out at? And if you get that opportunity, you know, use your head. Don't, don't prove them wrong. Make sure that you can follow through with what you promised them initially. Make sure that you can prove that you are worth what they are paying you and worth paying more and moving you up through the ranks as a technician. Something that I think I've seen plenty now is that guys will come into this industry and after a few years of experience or a little bit of time, they feel like they know more than what they actually do or they feel like they're worth more than what they actually are. And uh, I think that this attitude and attitude in general is a big problem in this industry. Uh, as a whole, I think there's a lot of guys that feel like they deserve a paycheck before they've done the work and that's just not reality. Put your head down, work hard, and prove yourself, and I really just wanna hit that, hit that home with you guys that attitude is everything. Accept your mistakes, accept responsibility. The details matter more than anything. How you zip tie something into place matters. Um, you know, and like I said, just keep your head down and work hard, and that's how you progress, and you can make a lot of money in this industry. Hey guys, so real quick, uh, I was sitting here editing this video and going over all the research for it that I did uh, prior to it and realized that I uh, really wanted to post it down in the description for you guys to look at. So as soon as you're done with this video, go down into the description, the first two links. Uh, the first link is going to be a link to the Fabtech program video. So that video goes uh, in depth a little more on what the Fabtech program is. The second link is going to be our Fabic video. That is the video about what Fabic as a whole is all about. Those two videos, check them out. They're really good videos, uh, really informational, uh, real short videos. So definitely check those two out. Those, like I said, will be the first two links in the description. Uh, the next two links below that will be the two education courses, uh, the two CAP programs. The Think Big program will be the first one and the Fabtech program will be the second link. Uh, good information resources as to how to uh, get into those and look into them. Uh, from there, I'll put the uh, shout out uh, links down in the description underneath that stuff. Now that we've gotten past some of the more boring things that people don't necessarily want to hear, let's move on to some of the more interesting things. People, of course, want to know how much money will I be making? So the simple answer is this. According to the Bureau of Labor, diesel mechanics are making an average of 41,600 and some odd dollars. But the top 10% of those earners are making around 61,000 and some odd dollars. 
And that's the simple answer because that's a statistical answer. The more complex answer is this. Depending on where you work and obviously who you work for, there's a lot more to be made in this industry. I know of technicians that are making between $150,000 and $200,000 a year. I know that there are guys that I work with, myself included, that are working on their fifth to seventh year, or maybe slightly just over, and they are earning between that seventy and ninety thousand dollar per year mark. That being said, it's all given on how much you're willing to work as far as overtime, who you work for, whether or not they allow you to work overtime, and honestly, what you prove yourself to be worth as a technician. There's guys that have worked for much longer than five to seven years, and they are not making anywhere near what some of the younger guys are making. And these aren't necessarily people that I work with, but just looking at the industry as a whole. As a little shout out, I think I'll put a little card up above. Check out the Rust Belt Mechanic. He has given a uh, survey over the last couple of weeks about uh, the earnings of technicians across the board, not necessarily diesel technicians. Granted, it did include diesel technicians and heavy equipment technicians. In his latest video, he did go over the earnings of um, the results of those surveys and what the earnings of some of those technicians were. Honestly, it was rather interesting, I found myself, and some of you might want to check that out on the topic of earning and just kind of figure out if this is really something you're interested in, maybe um, looking at more of the statistical side of things. So I think I've beat the dead horse enough. I think that uh, we'll s summarize this with the fact that at the end of the day, this is a very good paying job. When you work with people that you really enjoy being around and you work for people that you really enjoy working for, it also makes a world of difference. Obviously enjoying the work itself is also an important factor and I have the opportunity to have all three of those things in the job that I currently work and I really enjoy the benefits of where I work. That being said, the training uh, that it requires is very minimal. Do keep in mind that there is the expense of some tooling in order to be in this trade, but the trade-off between spending 150 grand for a four-year education and anywhere from five grand to 35 grand for uh, a job like this is something to take into consideration when you're looking to either switch careers or move forward in your career from high school. Honestly, I very much enjoy what I do. I'd like to see more people coming into this industry and doing it as well. Um, so I think I've rambled on enough about this subject. I know a lot of you were asking about this, uh, you know, how, how much we make, how to get into the industry, what kind of schooling it is. So I hope that this ramble session uh, was educational enough for you and uh, maybe uh, brought to light a little bit of what it takes to become a diesel technician. Like I said earlier, I will link in the description links to uh, the two Caterpillar programs, uh, the Fabtech program that I went through, uh, which is an 11 month program. Uh, it's pretty uh, intense. It's basically like working a job. Uh, you go through that program and then are offered a job, um, not necessarily guaranteed a job and you're not required to take the job, but uh, mo most of the time you are offered a job working through or in one of our dealership stores. So um, there's that program. And then the Think Big program, like I said before, I don't know a lot about it, but I do know that it is a, a nationwide Caterpillar specific program. And I know that it is a, um, a well-known uh, program. So 
I will link both of those. We have information on our dealership's website, so I will put links in the description for those, and you guys can feel free to check them out. Hit me up in the comments below if you have any uh, further questions. Also, check out Rust Belt Mechanics page. Uh, and one other shout out I'd like to shout out is American Detour. These guys are a pretty goofy crew of guys, not necessarily doing so much mechanic stuff. Obviously, they are um, not professional, I should say, but uh, they are some fun guys to watch, uh, just screwing around and uh, doing some redneck shit. So uh, I can appreciate that being as that's kind of how I grew up. And um, so go check out Rust Belt Mechanic, check out American Detour. Uh, both of those YouTube channels and also Instagram pages. Uh, I will leave links for all that in the description as well. Appreciate you guys watching. I'd really appreciate if you guys would give the video a thumbs up uh, and uh, you know add comments down below if you've got something that is on your mind that you'd like answered. Thanks for watching again. Christian Byer signing out.